Coming up on Saturday Sports Extra, Marion and Mattoon play a thriller, and Carterville and Tolono come down to the final play. All your high school football is ahead. It's that time. It's game time, baby. Time to kick off Sports Extra. Brought to you by Banterra Bank, Vogler Four, and Fairy Heart Institute, Memorial Hospital of Carbondale. Now, News 3 Sports Extra. Sports Extra. Sports Extra. Welcome in to Saturday Sports Extra. Another playoff weekend has come and gone, and a couple of great games today. Let's start with the 5A. The Marion Wildcats and the Mattoon Green Wave put on a show that kept us on the edge of our seats. It was one of the most exciting games I've ever seen. A battle right down to the very end. Let's get to it. We're going to skip to the fourth quarter because that's where it got crazy. 14-14 tied game. First play of the quarter, Mattoon's Kyle Drummond with a four-yard touchdown, 21-14 Green Wave. 11.50 to play. Now fourth and one on the three-yard line. Matt Brown hands off to Micah Markley for a touchdown, and it's tied again at 21. 2.40 to go. Caps get their first lead of the game. Fourth and one. Markley takes a seven-yard touchdown. 28-21. Wildcats on top. Under three to play. Drummond runs in another touchdown, cutting the lead to 28-27. Marion still up one. It all comes down to this extra point. It's good. But wait. It gets called back because of a Marion penalty. Green Wave decide to take the point off the board and go for two. No good. Marion's defense comes up with the stop. One minute on the clock, still 28-27, Marion. It should be Wildcat ball, but oh no, Mattoon recovers the onside <laughs> kick. They would get it close enough for a field goal attempt. Less than 15 seconds on the clock, field goal is no good. No good, Cats take the knee, and they also take a round two 28-27 win. We never quit. We, uh, we have a ton of heart in this team. and I mean, it's just, I can't put into words what, what this means. I mean, back-to-back -back trips to the quarterfinals that's just that's awesome we had to make stops and i told you they've they've been a lot but at crucial moments they choose not to break and uh, that's what it took tonight we, they were put in some tough situations over and over at the end and just kept coming through we're not done we're not satisfied yet we're we still got plans um next round round after we're still going so Marion gets the winner of Mount Vernon and Charleston. Rams' Joel Rush goes up the middle to give the Rams an early 6-0 lead on the road. Now the Trojans with fourth and goal. Eric Gentry gets the push into the end zone, and it's 7-6. On the ensuing possession, Jacob Alvis rolls left, and it's intercepted by Ross Daly, and the Trojans take advantage. Gentry rolls out, and he's going to find... Clayton Murphy deep for the first down. That leads to a touchdown, and it's 14-6 to at the half. Third quarter, Trojans punting. The Rams' Daryl Mitchell tries to make a play, but fumbles the ball. That leads to another touchdown for the home team. Turnovers would be the story of the day for the Rams. Alvis and Rush bobble the handoff. Charleston picks it up. Trojans go on to win it 28-12, ending the Rams' season. This is what happens with our style. But if you turn the ball over and you give somebody extra possessions, then you're not going to win. About a family. That's all you talk about is one heartbeat. And I say that all the time, just one heartbeat, we're a family. It's, just been, it's been a good year for us. I love every single one of them. You know, that's my family. It's, I just don't want to walk away on them. All right, let's move on to 4A. Last week, the A.J. Wildcats had to go up against the state's all-time leading passer, when they beat Rochester. This week, a much different story. The Mascuda Indians are big, and they like to run it right down your throat. AJ and Mascuda from Anna. This afternoon in a 4A matchup, Wildcats head coach Brett Dietering getting his troops fired up early on. It was working. Ryan Mays scores from the eight, and it's seven nothing AJ in the first quarter. To the second, tied at seven. Chris Montgomery, one of his three touchdowns on the day. A big game for him. It's 14-7 Indians, but the Cats answer with Ricky Hicks. Two-point conversion, no good, so it's 14-13 Mascuda. Now, right before the half, the Indians go to the air. Austin Gibbons, the Melvin Banks, 21-13 Mascuda at the half. Second half, more Montgomery. He runs for 260 yards. A.J., no answers for him on this day. This leads to a touchdown, making it 28-13. A.J.'s great season comes to an end they go down 42 to 28. It's definitely not the way we wanted to go down but uh i'm real proud of everybody i thought we played pretty hard we just didn't get it done we, i mean 
couldn't ask for a better season. I wish we could have kept going. Just high school football didn't get much better than that. And knowing it's my last, my last day, it's kind of emotional. Up next for Mascuda Mount Carmel, the Aces whip Breeze modern day 41 to 20. Interesting matchup between Carterville and Tolono Unity. Lions defensive coordinator Brett Dial coached four seasons at Tolono, and he's still very good friends with many of the guys on the staff. So you know Dial would like nothing more than to come out with a win in this one. Both defenses stout this afternoon, scoreless, until late in the second, facing fourth and long. Tony Brown hits Brad Drust, and Drust breaking some tackles, rumbling all the way down inside the five-yard line. Two plays later, Brown keeps it up the middle. It takes a while, but finally you're going to see the signal from the referee. Carter attacks on the extra point. Lions up 7-0 at the break. Third quarter, Bo Taylor takes it in from five yards, drawing the Rockets within one. Unity goes for two, but Stephen Blyer is there to take down Chris Alt short of the goal line, keeping it a 7-6 game. Carterville, the Rockets spent nearly the entire fourth quarter in Lion territory, but wound up with nothing to show for it. Alt coughs it up at the two to stop one drive, and the Rockets also missed a short field goal. So it comes down to this. Final play of the game, the Lions smother all to end it. Carterville is quarterfinal bound with a 7-6 win. Well, they were running belly all night, so we were looking for belly or counter, and we saw a quarterback leak out, so we just stuffed him. Oh, it was a great win. Our defense fought tough. Our offense is moving the ball. This Unity is a good program. They make it to the playoffs pretty much every year. They have good tradition. And just to come out here and get this win today, I felt good. Yes, we get to play another day. We, we won this one for our seniors, and... Uh, all they said every, every time in the huddle is one more one more game. Let's go, boys. All right, Cardinal now plays the winner of Columbia and West Frankfurt. In the first, John Heineken. He goes for a 30-yard run. This sets up a Columbia touchdown. It is 7-0 Eagles. Later in the first, more Heineken. He punches it in again. 14-0. Much of the same in the second. Heineken weaves his way through Redbird defenders for another 30-yard dash. This sets up another touchdown. 21 to nothing. The Redbirds meet their match today. They go down 48 to 13. Columbia is one heck of a team. Maybe as good as any team we've we've seen. Uh, very good up front. Great skill guys. I mean, just a darn good football team. They beat us just about at every phase of the game. After winning at Newton last week, the DeCoin Indians were rewarded with a home game today. They took on the undefeated Greenville Comets. Let's head to the field. This game was scoreless until the last minute of the first half when A.J. Hill would hook up with Seth Flint for the 35-yard touchdown pass. DeCoin went into the half up 7-0, but the second half belonged to Greenville. Here, Josh TV rifles it to Eric Fone, nodding the game at 7. In the ensuing kickoff, DeCoin fumbled, and Greenville recovered, setting up this. TB run to put the Comets up 14 to 7. Later in the first quarter, DeCoin driving again. Arthur Smith with a nice run, but he fumbles the ball away. Off that fumble, Greenville would kick a field goal to make the game 17 to 7. Now to the last five minutes of the game. DeCoin driving. Rudy Jones catches it, but Michael Bradley strips it. It was that kind of a day for the Indians as Greenville scores 17 unanswered points. The Indians are out. They lose 17.